All right. For our third constant acceleration equation, we are going to utilize equations 1 here and equation 2 here to generate our third equation. So if we take equation 1, v final equals v initial plus acceleration times time, we solve it for t. We are then going to substitute in for t. So there's a little bit of algebra here. So you have plenty of room on the page to substitute it in and see if you can practice your algebra skills and calculate the equation above. So at this point, you should pause the video, see if you can do that substitution, copy down what's here, do the algebra, and then unpause it if you didn't get it or even if you got it so that we can finish up this page of notes. So I'll give you a moment to give that a try. Okay, so hopefully you have successfully done that. If not, you can take a look at what I have here, how the algebra works out. But we get v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. And I have it written here twice, so you don't really need to put it in there twice, but the a and the delta x must have the correct positive or negative when we have numbers to plug in and we're going to use this to problem solve. You need to know whether the acceleration is positive, meaning in the forward direction, or negative in the backward or down direction, and whether delta x is positive, meaning the displacement was forward, or delta x was negative, meaning the displacement was backwards. Now we have speed final squared equals speed initial squared. And notice I use the word speed, not velocity. So we don't need to plug in the positive or negative for the v's, not because of the squares, right? But because speed is always positive. So it's speed final squared equals speed initial squared plus 2a delta x. Now, as we go through and learn about vectors, we're going to see that this is actually a vector, very vector equation because technically, technically, and we don't need to worry about it, you don't even need to put this into your notes, but just so you heard it here, that the 2a delta x, I'm going to zoom in, really has what is called a dot product in there, and a vector a and a vector delta x. So it's, it's a very vectory equation. These are still speeds, so they, they stay the same. But as long as we are working in one dimension and as long as we get the positive and negative in there correctly, we don't need to worry about that dot product and the vectors at any rate. But just for completeness, I wanted you to know that. All right. When to use the equations, meaning how do I know whether I'm using equation 1, 2, or 3? Well, first of all, you never use the equations at all unless you have constant acceleration. But if the, if the problem is a constant acceleration problem, you will use the equations. And oftentimes I'll have students ask me, well, how do I know which one to use? Well, the first thing I can tell you is that if you read the question and they do not mention time in the question, so no mention of time, then I would immediately go to v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x and see if that will solve it for me. Now, notice if they mention time, I probably would go back to equation 1 or equation 2 because they both have time in the equation to help me solve that problem. So, we will be doing a lot of problem solving with the constant acceleration equations and we won't be dealing with non-constant acceleration until we introduce calculus, so make sure that constant acceleration is mentioned or you're positive it's constant acceleration and you are in business to use the three equations and we need to have these memorized and just be able to quickly get them down onto the paper so we can begin and get into our problem solving.